Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Last week I was talking about five things that you should do before you cut out your pattern and to continue along in this beginner series for the beginning of the year. Today we're going to talk about how to transfer markings from your pattern onto your fabric. So let's dive right in. First up, what are these markings that you need to transfer? They can be a variety of things. You can find notches, circles, sometimes squares, buttonhole markings, button markings, pocket placements, pleat lines, dart markings. It's a whole variety of things. And for the most part, these markings are gonna show you where to put two pieces of fabric together. For example, if you're sewing a top with a set in sleeve, you're gonna have notches on the sleeve pattern that correspond to the armhole. That'll make sure that you get the correct sleeve on the correct side of your shirt. Putting in a sudden sleeve is probably one of the trickiest things and you definitely don't wanna skip marking your notches for those. Another place that you need to transfer markings is when you're sewing a dart. So the dart is that little triangle and you need to fold the fabric together and you wanna make sure that you get that lined up nicely so that the fit is accurate and you have a nice smooth line on your seam. Basically, these markings are important because they will help you sew accurately and help you figure out what is supposed to go where, what part of the fabric is supposed to match up with the other parts of the fabric. Now let's go over some of the most common marking tools and I'll also show you my preferred way to transfer markings such as notches and circles. So here we have a variety of tools that will make marks directly on fabric. First you have pencil type tools and then we have chalk and finally pens. With all of these tools, the most important thing is finding something that you can remove the markings later on. And determining that depends on the type of fabric and the tool. So I always recommend testing a marking tool on a scrap of fabric and then trying to remove it before you make any markings on your actual garment fabric. So let's take a scrap of fabric and try out some of these tools. First, we have some pencils. I honestly don't use the pencils very often. Um, these are something that I would really only use on a section of fabric that won't be visible later. And just like with paper, you can easily mark on fabric. Next, we have chalk. This is a pretty common dressmaker's chalk. And I think it might actually be a combination of chalk and wax because it has kind of a waxy feel to it and you can just use it to draw right on your fabric. And if you have one of these, you might wanna sharpen it to get a thinner line. You can sharpen this piece of chalk by using a blade and just shaving away. This is just a regular piece of chalk. I love using chalk like this because it's super affordable and it works really well. And it also rubs away pretty easily. If you can't rub it away with your fingers, it should come away with water. But again, test it. Next, this is kind of a fancier chalk tool. This is a Clover Choco liner. This has a little piece of metal at the end, so it's kind of like a tracing wheel. And you can use it just to draw lines again. This tool is really pretty new to me. And I think you actually need to press a little bit harder than you think you would. The great thing about it is that it draws a really sharp, thin line. You can see my dressmaker's chalk, chalk is kind of a medium line. The regular chalk is pretty thick, but this Choco liner makes a really thin line. You just need to press down a bit to make it work. Finally, there are pens that will wash away with water. And I have a couple of these. I find them really handy and they have really lasted a long time for me. So I do recommend having one of these on hand. With the chalk, you can often rub it away. You can see that blue line is going away pretty easily, but with these, you're gonna to need to use water. So let's try our spray bottle. You can see pretty immediately that pen just disappeared. These three tools use pressure to create marks on the fabric. 
This tool is a Hera marker, and this is more commonly used in quilting. This one is made out of plastic, but it's a lot like a bone folder that you would use in bookmaking if you've ever done that. And I use this tool to create quilting lines when I'm quilting. So for this, you need to layer your fabric on top of your batting and then just press hard with your hair marker and you make a little crease. So you could also use a butter knife or any kind of edge and it just creates a temporary crease in the fabric. What's really nice is that it's not permanent in any way, but you can still, still see this line and use it to guide your stitching. These two tools are more traditional in dressmaking. Both of these tools are used in a similar way, but you can also use this wheel with the serrated edge if you wanna transfer patterns. So you can trace a tissue paper pattern onto another piece of paper and the holes created by the serrated edge will give you a guideline for cutting out that traced pattern. These tools are used with transfer paper and there are some convenient things about using these tools. So I think they are especially great for marking darts and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the paper comes in a variety of colors and you'll wanna choose the color that works best with your color of fabric. I'm gonna test this out on a kind of light color of fabric. So I could probably use the red or the blue. If you have a dark fabric, you would wanna use the white or the yellow. So this paper conveniently comes folded and I'm going to show you why. What I find really convenient about using the tracing wheels is that when you have cut your fabric in two layers, either on the fold or regular, it makes it really easy to transfer your markings onto both sides of the fabric. You wanna make sure that you cut your fabric with the wrong side out. So here's our fabric and here's our pattern piece. And just cut out your pattern piece as normal. Then when you're ready to mark your dart, you're gonna grab your transfer paper and you want to sandwich your fabric with the transfer paper. You put one side of the transfer paper under the fabric, under that dart in this case, and then this top piece of the transfer paper goes on top. Then you put your pattern back on top and we can use our tracing wheel to trace the dart. So you wanna hold everything in place and then just draw a line with our wheel. And you wanna press pretty firmly. And it's the same idea if you use the non-serrated wheel. I think one benefit of this wheel is that you're not punching holes in your pattern, so it kind of preserves the integrity of that paper a little bit better. If you wanna mark the dots in the dart, you can make a little X. Then we can lift this away. We lift our pattern away and we can see we have a marking on this side of our fabric and on this side. We also have a marking on our surface. So you wanna make sure that you do this process on a surface that you can wash and that won't get damaged like a cutting mat. So I used to use my tracing wheels to mark my darts, but lately, probably the last 10 years, I use these tools instead. And I'm gonna show you how I use them. So I have a pattern notcher, a small hole punch, my thread snips that will also clip the fabric and just a regular piece of chalk. So to prepare my pattern for marking the dart, I will use my pattern notcher to notch into the ends of the dart. And this pattern notcher is like a hole punch, but it cuts a little U out of the edge of the paper. So you just put it on the edge, punch, and you get a U-shaped hole. This little U-shaped hole will allow me to come in with my scissors and clip the fabric just a little bit. Next, I punch holes for the dots in the dart. To do that, I fold my pattern in half along the dart and then I punch holes in these dots. I've already cut them in this pattern. And then I punch a little hole right at the end as well. Then I will use my chalk to mark those dots on my fabric. Let's see it in action. So we have our fabric and I'm going to 
I'm just gonna cut this edge as normal. Now I can get my chalk and I just go like this. I rub my chalk over those holes and I have really nice sharp dots on my fabric. You could do the same at the notches, but I like to clip it with my scissors. So I just come in and do a little snip. You wanna make sure that you don't cut too far. You wanna cut less than your seam allowance. The only inconvenient thing about this method is that I now have to flip my pattern piece over and do the wrong side. So that's just a little bit inconvenient. You can see I used scratch paper here, but you just do the same thing. You just mark those dots. The notches are already clipped. Now, when I sew the dart, I will fold it in half and match my notches and then use pins to line up those dots and hold it in place. And I will just eyeball it and connect the dots with my stitching. If you're new to sewing, you might wanna draw a line to give you a better guide. So I really like this method of marking because I get really nice clear dots and it's really a minimal amount of marking. And with the chalk, I don't have to worry about it being difficult to remove those lines. Sometimes with the paper and making like big thick lines, it can be visible later and that's the last thing you want when sewing. I recommend experimenting with different methods and finding the one that you like best. And it really might depend on what type of fabric you're using. I will rotate between these different tools and just use what I feel like works best for the project I'm currently working on. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and help other people find it. Also, if you want to support the channel and this free content, you can visit the pattern shop or buy me a coffee. And if you want to stay up to date on everything I'm up to, you can subscribe to my newsletter. All the links are down in the show notes. And of course, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Happy sewing.